And welcome back to the League of Legends Amateur Open. We are seeing Russ is looking for a date going up against the Elite Crew. Yes, Muddy, and this should be an exciting match with both of these poised in the winner's bracket looking to take that title. Yeah, Elite Crew, um, formerly Elite Crew Reborn from last week, they were our champions. So they did manage to win their first match and get up into the upper bracket. So we'll see here if they're going to be able to keep their title as the, the champions or if the team of Russ is looking for a date is going to be able to keep that momentum from last game and pick, pick up themselves another win. Yeah, and Russ is looking for a date. I'm just going to call him Russ LFD. Russ LFD has been looking so strong today, picking up their early win off of XMS. And a Trindamir and Kassadin being banned out from the Elite crew. I believe Final Hunt, yeah, Final Hunt's their mid laner. He played a really strong Kassadin in the finals last week. He was providing his team with a lot of roam as well as assassinations when it came down when it came down to assassinating the AD carry and Lux being banned out. They do not want Mikey on that Oh lock. man. That lock. That Lux is definitely so deadly with the uh I think she went Medjai's the last game, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Mikey did opt to go for that Medjai Soul Stealer. Did reach twenty stacks come 25 minutes or so, but he is a terror on Lux. That is just Elite Crew knowing who to ban, and they do not want him on that Lux. And we see Trinomir and Vladimir. I wonder if those are both going towards top or they're both for mid. Yes, exactly. Gambe for you actually is notoriously known for his split pushing. Last week, he played amazing split pushing champions. Trindamir, Vladimir, Teemo even, he brought it one game. He just split pushed the entire game and it worked out so well for Elite Crew. They just say, hey look, Gambe, split push that top lane, we'll keep pressure everywhere else on the map. And it worked out for them really well. And arguably Trindamir's uh, even better split pusher than Shen because he just sits there in the lane and then eats your tower and if you try to kill him he just slows away and heals himself. <laughs> and Sona being picked up right away for Rust LFD. Probably bottom lane, I mean I'm going to assume that's a support Sona, I don't think we're going to see an AP mid Sona, I mean as cool as that would be. And we are seeing Joan and BK picking up his infamous Corky. He played Corky uh, last week in the tournament and it's very interesting how he does build Corky. I guess you could say he builds three items at the same time. He does go for that Bilgewater Cutlass and then maybe a Phage, a Zeal, and he won't really finish an item until later on in the game. So it's really interesting to see that's how he plays his Corky and it's been working out for him. Yeah, that's it's really interesting to see that uh, he goes for those mid-game items, but these early picks have been quite safe. Not, not a lot of uh, whole game intention going on. Uh, Leona's very strong early, but she scales just as well into late. And uh, the same goes for Sona. While she's a great laner, she can pull those team fights around with that ultimate. We are seeing a bit of a troll coming out from Plushy Mikey here. He's running that revive and the clarity. I don't think that's what he will be running, but if it is, he might have a, a legit strategy up his sleeve. So we are seeing Vi being picked right now. It might be going to Kralol. He played Vi last game, and he did really well on her using that assault and battery to really lock up. Um, who did they play last game? XMS, I believe. Um, they're able to get some good engages down, and Teemo being hovered over right now for Hadu. Oh, <laughs> if that's if that's ever an anti-split post champion, it's right there, Teemo, with those shrooms and the safety. You really can't go wrong. Uh, he's great against auto attack top laners, and to counter that, it looks like that uh, Elite Crew is going to have to pick up an AP top lane if they're if they're looking to remotely. Oh, Caitlyn, I take my words back. Yeah, Caitlyn being locked in right there for Hadu. He played Bane uh, in their game against XMS Gaming. So, we've really seen what Hadu can do. Now he's going to play a bit of a safer AD carry. Caitlyn, with that long range, is able to really put a lot of pressure during the laning phase with her range, you know, using the uh, Yordle Snap Traps to assert real pressure and dominance in that lane so that the supports can't get into that brush, and he's able to farm really well, as well as get some really good poke damage off with Headshot. And yeah, it's going to be a really tenuous uh, balance there on bot lane, because if Leona lands something, Corky's burst is just going to own whoever she lands on. But if she misses anything, the poke from Sona and Caitlyn is just going to be devastating to their health bars. Right now, we are seeing the bot lane of um, 
elite crew of Corky and Leona, which has a lot of burst potential early on. The passive coming up from Leona procs a debuff where any any form of damage onto your opponent will proc and it'll deal extra damage. And since Corky is more of a caster champion, he can use those spells and proc every single every single time a debuff is used by uh, used by Leona, which is activated by Leona hitting one of her skills onto an opponent. So this bottom lane really provides a lot of early game burst potential. Yeah, Corky's Phosphorus Bomb, definitely one of the highest bursting abilities that an ADC has, and with Leona's passive, I think it does 20 to 35 damage at levels 1 through 3. It's going to be a lot of pressure coming down to not die on that bot lane for uh, Russ is looking for a date. <laughs> Very unique name coming out from these guys, but despite their, despite their silly name, they are not, they're in this to win. They, they you know, I, I really hope that the prize for them is that Russ actually gets a date, and then they'll just be the Russ. <laughs> Russ securing a date would definitely be huge for them, in confidence wise, and it would definitely look good on a resume. So we are seeing uh, Jace being locked in. I'm assuming that's going to be going to winning here, um, and Syndra being picked up, probably for the mid lane. But we'll see how this goes. We'll see how Gambe picks to try to counter that Syndra, because the level 6 all-in from Syndra is nigh on unstoppable. Hopefully she's not jungling Syndra, but I really, really doubt that. What I really want to take a note here, Kodo, is that um, Elite Crew is running an Olaf. If I'm not mistaken, he isn't the greatest champion right now. He is... No. Nope. He's deep he's definitely not. By, yep. by everyone in the League community. So... I'm really curious to see how this works out for him. He's by no means an unusable champion. He still provides that slow with that with his Q as well as the true damage coming out from that reckless strike, rec reckless swing, I believe it's called. And the Ragnarok, his ultimate being able to ignore all forms of CC and get to that back line to get a lot of damage onto any target he really needs to. But if you think about it, Olaf provides everything that he needs to lane against Jace. He has the sustain to uh, heal up against the uh, poke, and then he has the access to throw whenever he needs to, which don't call, cost all that much. So if he wards up and farms up, he'll do pretty well in lane, even if Jace pushes him all the way to the turret. Yeah, considering that Jace, although he is a ranged champion, he has about 550 range. If Mind Grab on Olaf is able to land those axes and being able to close the gap a bit he could get a reckless swing off and that could be huge for him yeah and right now i don't think olaf's been reworked quite yet but the uh the his w right now gives him spell vamp and lifesteal so life stealing off of that reckless swing is just huge yeah now we're about to get under underway with the game here we are seeing russ is looking for a date Mikey on Syndra, Hadu on Caitlyn, Frosty on Sona, winning on Jace, and Cray on Vi. It's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting matchup. I'm not gonna lie. All these teams these teams are very unique. I don't think I've ever seen these team comps played. Yeah, taking a look at Elite Crew, they have Leona and Corky in that bottom lane. Joan and BK opting to go for that ignite for just that much more burst potential in lane. Final hunt with Jax in the jungle. We are used to seeing Final Hunt as the mid laner and Ganbei as the top laner. We are seeing a swap here though. Ganbei is going to be going into the mid lane with that Orianna and Minecraft going to the top on Olaf. So this is interesting. Some lane, some different roles being used here. It's definitely to say, hey, you know, uh, Ganbei, you play a really good Orianna. Go into the mid lane with him. We want Orianna for our team comp here. And Minecraft says, you know, I play good Olaf. Let's see what we can do with that. And it definitely helps when you're a team that's very flexible, being able to bring in certain champs in certain situations, being able to switch your roles, and being able to still perform at a level that you normally would. Yeah, definitely, and a lot of well-established teams do this too, where they just swap roles, and it mind games the enemy so much, because they're facing a completely different uh, person, not even just champion, and suddenly all the philosophy and experience that you had playing the team previously is just out the window. Although I do think it is interesting that uh, they picked a farmer that relies a lot on getting gold and items now what what is worth looking at here um winning on jace did decide to go for teleport so 
he's sacrificing that kill potential in lane to try and help out his other lanes or hopefully set up you know if there's a ward on dragon then he could easily get into that fight and turn around a dragon fight if need be so that's that's an interest that's a good call by uh winning if he's able to use that teleport to his advantage does have to be careful though that he is yeah, definitely that, he is sacrificing that ignite that true damage um over damage over time which can be huge it secures kills it it can help really well against dives, but I'm sure winning is confident in his Jace play enough that he said, hey guys, I can run teleport, you know, I can help you guys out bottom lane, mid lane, dragon, whatever you guys need. I can split push late game, being able to use that to get back into a fight. And that's a, you know, it could be a team call coming up from Russ is looking for a date. They said, hey, you know, winning, grab teleport and we'll use you, you know, late game, early to mid game, wherever we can, you know, help you out with some jungle ganks from Cray on Vi maybe he doesn't even need the ignite maybe the kill but maybe winning is so comfortable on jace he doesn't even need that ignite he's going to be able to use yeah. his full potential to finish off Minecraft here so i'm really curious to see how this works out for him yeah he's definitely not threatened by the olaf but uh you never know the berserker axe man's pretty crazy he will he will be missing that ignite so olaf's vicious strikes and lifesteal will certainly play a role when he starts to get low if jace if jace's burst is not enough Olaf may very well just take it by auto attacking him to death. Yeah, that's a good point. If if Minecraft and a uh, winning try to trade in top lane or skirmish, it definitely won't go in the favor of winning. Uh, It'll be hairy. It'll definitely be hairy. Yeah, um, like like you said, the ignite would be huge for denying that regen that comes out of his vicious strikes pass uh, W. I believe that's what it's called, granting yep. him life steal and spell vamp, and. That in trades is huge. So I definitely, I'm definitely hoping to see winning try and stay back with, with his uh, laning base. He doesn't want to get too close to uh, Minecraft. Yeah, if Minecraft gets off that uh, low health and he gets the attack speed and vicious strikes, he'll he'll basically just stay in lane forever. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this game early again, and you can probably guess why. Why? Why would that be? Well. Russ is looking for a date, has four skins, and uh, oh, Elite here, intimidation. while they have UFO Corky, which is like one and a half skins right there, Debonair Jace is just a little <laughs> too fly for that. Yeah, and Arcade Sona, I mean, lots of people like it, I'm not the biggest fan of it, It's, I mean, it's still a cool skin, but we are seeing also I'm Nemesis Jax, I like that skin, to be honest. It is a good skin, It's it's got good particles and it's purple, right? What more do you want? Now, I'm also a big fan of, um, I'm not, not sure exactly what it's called, but it's like Hockey Player Jax. So I am Canadian. Oh yeah, I saw that. I am Canadian, big it's fan so of hockey, rare. so, you know, it's good to see that. No skins. Let's see if that ever gets played. Yeah, no skins coming up for Gambay though, unfortunately. Ah, uh, Gambay, why you disappoint us? I'm honestly, I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but I'm disappointed to not see Gambay going in that top lane. He was just so exciting to watch um, hey hey bear with me here what if what if oriana goes top and olaf goes mid if game does decide to go split push oriana top that would be that would just i don't know that would blow my mind that would be very awesome to watch because game is a very exciting player to watch so it's not likely but i mean i'm not gonna i'm not gonna deny just yet I mean, theoretically it works, right? Oriana's range, she's pretty safe, Jace can't really catch up to her, and I don't know what Olaf would do mid, though. He would just kind of Olaf yeah, he around. Yeah, he would get zoned pretty hard by the Dark Spears, I think they're called, on Syndra. Yeah. You look into that really quickly while the game's loading up. So we do have on the blue team, Russ is looking for a date, going up against Elite Crew, which are your Week 7 champions. So we'll see... If they're able to pick up a pick up a victory here, move on farther into the upper bracket, hopefully get to the finals again where they can look to defend their title. The aggression is just being telegraphed so hard by uh, John and BK and Voodoo Savior because Corky foregoing a barrier takes ignite with a Leona, and I'm not sure what Caitlyn can do if they land all of that. Yeah, the burst potential, like we said in this bottom lane, is going to be huge. The ignite followed with the phosphorus bomb, the gatling gun, as well as the auto attacks that have true damage stacked on top of them from Corky's passive. 
as well as the early game uh, burst that comes out from Leona also. She actually does a lot of damage uh, early game with with her abilities, and it's not something to be neglected either. And yeah, we see a level 1 pause coming out. Both teams definitely strategizing hard. Oh, a DC. I lied. I They'll probably know. strategize while, while the person's DC'd, though. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't quite see that DC, but oh well, that's fine. We'll just wait uh, for this. Who was it that DC'd? I'm not quite sure. I didn't see it go down. Oh, okay. Well, either way. Um, let's talk about let's talk about the uh, early game jungle map pressure here because that's such a defining piece for each team. Yeah, that that's very true. We are seeing final hunt on Jax in the jungle, and Jax, I guess you could say, is a carry jungler. He's gonna want to build damage. Um, he might opt to go for a spirit of the ancient golem maybe to give him a bit of tankiness as well as tenacity. But for the most part, he's going to want to build a Blade of the Ruin King as well as maybe a Trinity Force because Jax is a very damage-heavy champion. He is a anti-carry. He's able to dive deep onto either Plushy Mikey on Syndra or Hadu on Caitlyn and be able to lock them up with his Counter-Strike and deal a lot of damage with his Empower W. Yeah, and arguably he has one of the most flexible builds. Scaling off of both AD and AP, he can use Nashor's Tooth, uh, Gwinsu's Rage Blade, and then Hextech Gunblade. All these different options are there for him, but if he doesn't get the gold, it's not going to happen. And while his lanes are pretty self-sustaining in terms of damage and pressure, uh, Kralol is just going to be a beast ganking on Vi. Yeah, kralol has been playing really strong on Vi lately. He's using those Vault Breakers exceptionally well. He's able to to get uh, able to close that gap just enough and able to get that slight knock up or knock back whatever you want to call it and that gives his team enough time to lock down um the enemy laner just long enough to get that damage off that they need to secure a kill and you see that uh if two pieces of cc aren't enough between a line nuke and a knockback she even took exhaust that's that's a that's kind of some crazy lockdown right there from a jungler alone yeah, he really wants to go for some early game kills. Because Vi, I guess you could say she doesn't have any CC. She does have the little bit of a knockback from Vault Breaker and Assault and Battery when she does hit 6. But other than that, um, other than that and Red Buff, she doesn't have uh, too many ways of really locking down an opponent to be able to get to secure a kill. So t grabbing that exhaust, being able to slow them down for just long enough for... Uh, his teammates to be able to come into a fight, land their CC, or even or even just get the damage off that needs that needs to be used to secure a kill for them. So I like to look at as exhaust as really a, a personal preference because you could opt to go for the flash to be able to set up ganks just as well as exhaust. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna discredit him on the exhaust either though because he did use it very well in the last game. Yeah, I mean Flash is obviously an easy take, right? You can get in, you can get out, you get whatever you want. But exhaust, you only get exhaust for one thing, and that's to kill people, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, if she meets up Jax in the jungle, uh, it's going to be rough for either one. And while normally Jax could probably take that trade, early game, it's going to go to Vi with the shield. What we should take note here is that um, Frosty on Sona opted to go all wards, whereas uh, Voodoo Savior on Leona decided to go for the Fairy Charm in wards. So... I think that Frosty and um, Frosty and Hadu in this bot lane are gonna want to get some early pressure. They're gonna want to pink up the brushes so that they can have control to get the Him of Valors off, as well as the um, the Q from Caitlyn. I'm not quite sure what it's called right away. And Pilt over Peacemaker. Pilt over Peacemaker. Thank you. And if they're able sure. to, if they're able to keep that pressure with the range and the poke and the sustain. They won't have too much of a problem in this lane because Leona has no innate sustain. She's really an all-in champion, and if she's too low to go in, that's really bad for her. Yeah, that's arguably Leona's biggest weakness too, so she's looking for those extra wards to try to deny Leona that brush control, but if she'll be able to use it is another question because, as I mentioned earlier, Sona's basically a melee minion at level 1. Yeah, we are seeing a melee minion at level 1, I like that. We are seeing a pause go down for... Um, I believe it was Russ was looking for a date that called this pause because uh, winning is having some connection issues. So we hope that he'll get these sorted out right away and we'll get right back into this game. Um, this this is uh, Russ is looking for a date against Elite Creek. You can see that in the top and the overlays there. 
Elite Crew is a returning team to the Amateur Open. They were the Week 7 champions, and Russ is looking for a date, a brand new team to the Amateur Open. At first, you might think that Russ is looking for a date. It's kind of a silly name, and maybe they might be a joke team, but no, they take this seriously. They are here to win. And you never know, that DC might just be Russ looking for a date, and by the time he finds it, we're going to be in this, and suddenly his team is now empowered by his finding of a date. <laughs> and I'm probably not going to see any crazy starts. Like the, the blue buffs are just about to spawn, or the, the buffs, that is. Final Hunt is just going to start off as blue buff. Kraylol is opting to start for his red buff. And with the current jungle right now, it used to be that the junglers were pretty much forced to start that blue buff and then red or however they wanted to go about it. But right now, it's pretty much you, you can start whatever you want because your teams are probably going to give you a hard enough leash that you can just not smite it, go right over to your other buff, smite that, and then get a look for a gank right away, which can this, be huge. This is a pretty big decision, though, because... Even though Vi uses mana, that's that's kind of the obvious choice, right? You start blue, get your mana, you take red, and then you have red longer, so you can gank longer. By taking red first, she's looking to probably mirror the path of Jax, who can't afford to start that red because he needs the blue, and then maybe meet him for a level 2, 2 on 2 engage top, or even just invade his jungle straight up. Yeah, that's a good point. Kralo could also decide to go top right, or, right after that blue if he wants to, to try to get an early kill for winning in that top lane, but... It's really, it really comes down to it how, what his play style as a jungler is, and what he really sees, like if there's any opportunities arising for them, then it could really, it could really be good. Because with the current jungle right now, I believe if the junglers, if you go from your, whatever buff you start to your next buff, you'll be level 3 before every other laner hits level 3, so you're going to have that one level advantage to be able to get a really good gank off and hopefully secure a kill for your team. And as Jax, he needs the gold, so more than likely he'll probably take the two buffs and probably take another camp or two to take four first. So Vi definitely has a huge opportunity to open up the lanes. And obviously, Olaf only has Ghost, while Jace has... Well, he's Jace. <laughs> I definitely think that Final Hunt is going to want to gank a bit more. He's going to want to get Joan on Corky uh, a bit ahead, as well as Gambay and Orianna. And I could see Cray trying to get some really good counter ganks off. I really feel that once Counter-Strike is down for Final Hunt, there's not too much to him on Jack. does have that Empower and the Leaf Strike to deal some decent damage, but Kray does have um, the E of Vi, I'm not quite sure what that's called, the Excessive Force and the Vault Breaker, which, which are on relatively short cooldowns, so he's able to get a lot of damage out early on. So... Yeah, it's really it really comes down to like I really think in in most of these games in the tournament that whichever jungler is really able to get their team ahead early on, it could be huge for them. It does fall on their shoulders, but it also relies heavily on the lane. So, oh, looks like the game's unpausing. If you look in the mid lane, Syndra versus Oriana, between which one will push? It's actually pretty even because normally Oriana auto pushes the lane, but Syndra's dark sphere has basically hit everything in their mother. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I haven't seen Plushy Mikey play um, Syndra, but being him as a very mechanically skilled mid laner, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll be able to play this matchup very well. Syndra does have a very strong level six burst that unleashed power. Um, I believe it gains damage uh, based on how many dark spheres she has out on the field at the moment, and. It deals a lot of damage, especially against a very squishy champion like Orianna. Mikey could look to pick up. I mean, see an engagement in the bottom lane. Frosty getting dropped really low here. Some return damage going down to Voodoo, and I think that trade was honestly a tie. Yeah, I I really don't see any major advantages coming out. Uh, blew a few pots on Leona, which are always valuable, of course. But we see, interestingly enough, Leona chose to suck down a mana potion after using only one spell. Yeah, she could. With the fairy charm. With the Fairy Charm, she might not have had to, but uh, interestingly enough, more so, we see Vi not opting to gank and just farming continually, while Jax has gone to gank mid. Yeah, we are seeing a final hunt in that mid lane. He could be looking to pull something off here. The counter strike goes down, the leap strike, gonna land that thunder, he's gonna have the red buff props. Oh, plushy Mikey, gonna be able to land a really nice scatter of the week with those dark spears able to land a stun right there, so that's gonna keep him safe. Those are so hard to land at close range, especially because you occasionally just cast it past them. And Plushy Mikey, 
He'll be fine after taking down another health pot. Gambe for use is trying to uh, push the lane back so he doesn't lose any CS at tower. And interestingly, at top, we see Olaf winning versus Jace. Huh? Huh? Don't count him out. An engagement at bottom lane. Voodoo's gonna step on and roll south jump. He's getting dropped really low here. The flash from Hadou. The flash from Voodoo. Are they gonna be able to secure this kill here? And yes, Hadou's gonna pick up a kill onto Joan there, grabbing himself first blood. This is huge for the bot lane of Russ is looking for a date. Yeah, who would have thunk that a Kate Sona would out first blood a Corky Leona with Ignite and Exhaust? That's. That's some slick play right there. That's exactly what we were talking about too. Uh, oh, I see Cray the Vault Breaker going to tons of damage on the campaign. The Scout of the Week landing. Great play there by Cray and Mikey. He said, hey, look, Mikey, I'm coming to the mid lane. Vault Breaker's up. And they saw that Gambe overextend. I didn't. I wouldn't really say overextended. He got himself too close to the mid lane brush. He had no idea that Cray was in that brush. And he was able to get a really good gank up. All, all in all, great play there by Mikey and Cray. And you know, I think Oriana probably could have gotten away with the flash, but the thing that kept him back was actually the exhaust. So it's already starting to pay dividends right there. Kraylaw taking up the first assist of the game for the junglers. Yeah, that's a good point that you bring up the exhaust, because we were talking about that a bit, how how it's, it could really play a big part in this game, and right now it's proving to really help out right now for um, Russ is looking for a date, as it did secure Mikey a kill, and as if Syndra isn't a champion that dominates her lane enough, giving her a kill early on, it could prove really bad. Vault Breaker going Gank down to Minecraft! Wow. That Vi. Right those, those Vi ganks. Those Vi ganks are deadly. Yeah, I really think Kraylol right now is very comfortable on that Vi. Final hunt in the top lane, landing that counter strike onto winning, but Kraylol is right there just in case anything happens. And final hunt is pretty oom right here. Yeah, winning will probably be back just to be able to match the Olaf's pressure and not lose too much farm, but we see Vi going in. The Vault Breaker being used in that top lane to get two procs of her W. I'm not quite sure what that's called. The the denting blows, which works similarly to uh, Vayne's Silver Bolts. Uh, once you get three procs, um, it'll deal percentage of your health and grant her extra attack speed. I believe that's what it is. And Mikey going a bit aggressive on the Gambe here, but Gambe playing this one really well with that command attack and command dissonance. And a major part of Vi's damage is also the uh, armor reduction that she gets off of uh, off Den of the denting, denting blows. blows. Yeah, yeah uh, the armor reduction it's huge because with a Jace, that's so much physical damage coming in that uh, every every piece of damage put on is just amplified by so much more. Yeah, that's very true. It really helps Vi in the uh, early to mid game get some really good ganks off. Just shredding the armor of her opponents and then really helping um, her laner set up for some good kills. Or even she dishes out a lot of damage herself. Also, it's not to say that Vi is, is kind of like an... Um, Kind of like an Alistar jungle that doesn't deal as much damage as he probably could. He's more for setting up ganks. Vi actually can set up really strong ganks while doing lots of damage. And meanwhile, in bot lane, we are seeing a lot of pressure right now going out down from Hadu and Frosty. Gonna look to. She was spotted. Syndra was spotted by the ward, which probably didn't get cleared uh, either through accident or just on purpose for mind games. But <laughs> she, she might not be able to pull this off, and Oriana will be able to push mid. Uh, this is exactly the kind of relief that Oriana needed. She's caught up just a little bit in farm, yeah. and it looks like she'll be able to do some good deeps to that tower. One thing to note here, Final Hunt is grabbing that blue buff from himself. He wants to be able to sustain in the jungle with his mana, and maybe Gambit just said, you know, I don't need I don't need the blue buff right now, and Final Hunt going a bit aggressive onto Frosty here, that Counter-Strike being used. Frosty getting dropped down to about a quarter here. Kralo going a bit aggressive here. He doesn't have that Vault Breaker available. No flash on Gambay's available. And that's going to be a kill for Kralo. Great play by him right there to see the opportunity to pick himself up a kill. That'll be his first kill of the game. And that, there is the boom. Kralo with the, Kralo with the Vi punching, punching Gambay to death almost with no contest. Uh, it does look like that bot is going for a gank though. And Hadu, Frosty, and Mikey are able to pick up a kill on the final hunt right there. Scatter the weak being used. Great play there by Russ is looking for a date. To say, hey look, he's engaging. Let's fight this and pick up a kill. Plushy, had, Plushy Mikey had built up four spheres. And at that point did, I think, 700 oh uh, straight up damage with magic alone. 
Wow. Unleashed power deals a lot of damage. Even I and underestimate a lot of the time the power of that <laughs> ultimate. And it's it's interesting to note too because Oriana only has about a thousand health. Uh, so if she gets those spheres down, lands a stun, Ganbei's gonna have no attempt for retaliation. Yeah, that's a good point. Oriana is a very squishy champion in that mid lane, especially since Syndra is a very bursty champion. So Mikey is definitely playing this matchup in his favor. But we do take a look here though, Gambe is out farming him, not by very much, but he still has a CS lead and he could look to press that on by pushing the lane and eventually taking tower because Mikey is roaming a decent amount. Definitely, and speaking of towers, bot tower went down, so all that global gold with a 5-0 lead already will put them pretty far ahead. And looking at top lane, Mindref has opted for a lifesteal build while winning has opted for defensive warden's mail, so they both do really well against each other. It's some slick counterplay by both of these top laners. Yeah, and we were talking quite a bit about this top lane. Early on, there was a, a, a little bit of engagement coming out from um, Minecraft, and the ignite proved to be the deciding factor in that fight. No kills. No kills did end up happening, but it forced Winning to back off. He realized, hey, this ignite is not letting me trade at all with him. I have to back out from this. So. And the flash down, flash crescendo coming down from Hadu. Hadu's gonna flash into that one. The, ooh, the, what's it called? The solar flare was used by Leona there to lock them up, but the ace in the hole from Caitlyn was not enough to, or er, was not enough to finish flash. off uh, Voodoo because he was able to block that from Joan. We see Plushy Mikey readying those spheres to just burst Oriana, but she spotted it a little too soon. And Leona's ult has just been blown, right? So it's on a 60 remaining second cooldown. It's, it's going to be hard for them to trade now in the lane. Yeah, that Solar Flare is a very strong ultimate in the early game stages. It does provide a lot of damage as well as you see Assault and Battery being used in the mid lane. Scout of the Wake being used, I believe. I believe and there Gambe, is the ult. <laughs> yeah, I believe Gambe accidentally flashed into Mikey Mikey there. A little bit of a misplay there, but final take it down really low here. Crazy to start taking it down that tower. We're gonna start get tanking that tower rather. Scout of the week being used, not gonna be able to uh, finish off final hunt there. But yeah, that was a bit of a misplay there. He might have misclicked the flash because it ended up flashing into plushy Mikey there and be able to cure a kill. Bolt breaker being used. The exhaust go down to the final hunt. Ooh, oh, the dives. The dark, Is he gonna get it? A dark spear being used. Leona from the back. Great Zenith Blade being used there to lock up Mikey and secure them a kill. Cray lol. Oh, not quite being able to hit. Leona does not have Solar Flare available just yet. She is going to be able to get that. Oh, she used the Zenith Blade and flashed out right away. That was very interesting because she didn't lock the Solar, uh, the Zenith Blade didn't lock down onto Vachi there. And Ghost being popped by Minecraft in that top lane, winning's just going to back off from that one. Yeah, not much that Jace can do to chase that, but that engage is extremely, extremely favorable for uh, for Elite Crew. With the Leona, Leona landed almost everything there, and if she had not blown ult earlier, I do not doubt that she would have gotten two more kills for their team. Yeah, taking a look at the farm right now, we are seeing Minecraft on Olaf a bit ahead of uh, Winning's Jace. He's about 30 CS ahead right here, and it's definitely, I mean, I guess you could say it's going to show that Olaf is not the champion to be overlooked or maybe maybe minecraft is a very comfortable uh olaf player we are seeing on top Hunt. lane command shockwave landing onto winning here the ignites ticking and gambe for you it's gonna pick up a kill for himself Jax actually didn't get the assist on that which is interesting so while he will get an experience lead uh possibly fearing the ks there he will not get the gold bonus yeah and, and it looks like they're gonna group up bottom yeah russ is looking for a date is gonna look to secure this dragon for themselves here uh, I believe it's going to go uncontested. Final hunts in that top lane. And that's 190 gold going to Russ is looking for a date. They do have a 3k gold lead right now. Yeah, it's a major, major thing as a jungler where uh, starting from the 8 minute mark all the way down to the 20 minute mark, you really just can't show top lane at all or else the enemy jungler can just take that dragon for free. Uh, also, Orianna was, Orianna was top with Jax. That leaves three members below to defend and there's not much they can do after that. Assault and Battery being used in that mid lane, Gambe for you, Scatter the Week being used, Crescendo all under the tower of Elite Crew there, and that's another kill for Mikey, he is 4 and 1. Alts on alts on alts. <laughs> I think yeah. all three of them blew it there, right? Yeah, absolutely, they really wanted to get that kill for Mikey there, to give him a bit bit of a, um, uh, to, to 
strengthen his lead a bit there. I kind of <laughs> kind of get got a little tongue twisted there. It is a long night for me, guys. So please forgive me. Um, yeah. We are seeing though um, Minecraft on Olaf still ahead of CS on winning. So. Taking a look at these other lanes in CS, Mikey is ahead by about 10. Not really a big deal, but he does have four kills compared to Gambit for use one kill. Um, taking a look at the bottom lane, um, Hadu right now has a CS lead over Joan. He has about 30 CS right now. Joan does have a Bilgewater Cutlass as well as a Vampire Scepter. So he might be opting to go for that um, early game. Um, Blade of the Ruined King. But uh, if we look at the fog of war between the two teams, the blue side with Russ is looking for a date has so much more, so much more coverage, particularly around the top half, and they're probably looking to pressure that side next. While on the other side, elite crew, shockwave going down, Gambe drops the ult. Flash from Mikey, and that dark spear is gonna be able to them kill. Meanwhile, mid lane Kralo gonna use that exhaust onto Voodoo. The solar's landing on him directly under the tower. He's gonna tank. Oh, is he gonna live? Yes, no. Joe taking up that kill. That was a great missile barrage coming out from him. Able to uh, to p finish that kill from the tower. Final hunt going a bit aggressive here. They could definitely look to fight this right here. Joan is. Oh, and Minecraft coming in down from the top lane. The ignite taking down on Mikey. He's gonna be able to secure that kill. And Joan still going a bit aggressive on two Frosty. Just just gonna back into that one. I believe that was a two for two. So. That, they, wow, that really closed the gold lead. It's about a 2 yeah. day gold lead right now. For it was so close before for that. And any doubts about Minecraft on Olaf are now completely cleansed as he picks the farm up and the kill. So he's now 1 1, match with Jace. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like he might be going for a TM at first. So he's going to have a lot of wave clear potential as well as a lot of. He can dish out some decent AoE damage in fights with, with those auto attacks. And so much burst will be coming down from Olaf with his already great sustain. And Final Hunt taking the blue with the ward spotting him out. Just about to die there, so they will know to clear that and they'll get the timer on that just fine. What I do want to take a look at though is... Gambe for you is 1 in 5 on Oriana. He is by no means ahead of um, Mikey in that mid lane. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that he's in line. He is behind right now. I don't want to say it's because he's... he's not comfortable in the mid lane but we aren't usually used to seeing him in that mid lane so that could be a could be a, a side effect of it or maybe just mikey's just too too dominant of a mid laner right here so that's kinda... true very few people play syndra so it's very hard to practice that matchup john and mbk getting caught assault and battery being used onto joan right there and they're gonna switch their focus to um gambe but they're just gonna back off into that one a kill going down to cray Looking at summoners, Elite has so many more up that I think they'll be pretty safe, but they just won't give up the tower. It's gonna go down, and Cray Law going ham. Yeah, Cray Law right now playing an extremely strong guy. She's definitely not a champion that I am used to seeing very often, but. He's showing me what he can really do on that Vi, and it's definitely some. It's definitely something that teams that are gonna go against Ru Russ is looking for a date. They're gonna have to really pay close attention to that Vi and not take him lightly for that. And with these wards just starting to die out, we'll probably be seeing some plays. Krayla will clear out the bottom, but uh, overall the map is now anybody's game. And we are seeing. Um, Haduku picking up those wraiths just to grab himself a little bit of extra CS and gold. He's sitting on 152 CS right now. He is farming very well in this game. So, I'm going to check how much gold he's sitting on. He has 6,000 total gold. He is really far ahead right now. He has that Infinity Edge um, Infinity Edge completed. He could look to go for a Phantom Dance or a Berserker's Greaves next. Really what he wants. Um, the extra crit damage that is going to come out on top of the Headshot passive is going to be huge. That's going to be pretty insane. Infinity Edge Caitlyn is probably one of the most, probably one of the most annoying things because she'll just pot shot you for 500. But with 500 damage, that doesn't compare to Syndra, who now with only two dark spears on the ground will do about a thousand damage with magic alone. Yeah, right now we're seeing um, elite crew uh, grouping up in their mid lane. They have four members there right now we are seeing winning going a bit aggressive on the mind graph here he's gonna pop that ragnarok and he's just gonna run away some early pressure coming out from him but uh mid's looking to fight and they want to scrap real bad we'll see if kralal can engage on this and elite just happy to back off for now warding up and just playing it safe 
Now we are seeing uh, Gambit just scouting out that, scouting out that brush. They, it does, does look like they do know that the dragon is going to be coming up relatively soon. And I think that elite crew right now. Oh, <laughs> Mikey! I'm not quite sure what that skill is called, where you can take minions. And force of will. <laughs> yeah, force of force will, of will taking yeah. that blue buff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was. That was securing his team of blue buff and denying that away. And we are going to see a lot of damage going down on the Voodoo here. And Craig getting his assault battery to get on the drone right there. Lots of damage going down. Is the flash coming up from Frosty into that crescendo, crescendo mind graph taking a lot of damage here. Cray is getting dropped pretty low here. Oh, and the solar flare landing only onto Frosty, but Mikey gonna flash and use that unleashed power to pick up a kill onto Joan. Final Hunt is gonna try to duel a couple of them there. Kraylol going back into the fight, and looks like another kill is gonna be picked up for Kraylol there. Yeah, and that fight went so well for Russ's looking for a date, because even though Vi reached out so far with the Vault Breaker and the, uh, the Assault and Battery, she was in the middle of four people, and she lived for so long, long enough for the Sona to just ult everybody. And that ult was so key. Um, that gave Syndra enough time to walk up and just devastate Corky. Corky went down in an instant, but Leona was able to, you know, route that and be able to lock down Syndra long enough to at least, you know, give them some kind of breathing space. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. So looking in mid lane, we have Jace here, farming up and just happy to push out the lane. He's going to go back and grab some gold, and with his 1,000 gold, he'll be able to pick up another item. Corgi on the bot, not even bothering to freeze the lane. He's pretty happy to clear it. Um, we'll see if he continues to push the lane, and he will. Corgi's sitting on a hefty gold lead, even though he lost bot lane. Not handily, he's 60 CS behind. Uh, we do see as he has more solid items, and you were right about that earlier. He's building a lot of half items and not really finishing a tier 3 item, which is pretty interesting considering uh, most ADCs right now these days. On Corky, they would go maybe Triforce or a Bork. Uh, Kaylin's opted for the instant infinity edge. Corky's just happy to sit on all his half items. Right They're grouping now, now mid. Yeah, we are seeing um, Russ is looking for a date putting down that pressure onto the mid lane, and they're gonna want to keep this up. Solar Flare landing right onto Hadu there! Voodoo's gonna engage right with that Zenith Blade. He's not gonna be able to get that Q off though, and it looks like the Kray is gonna be their target of focus. The Command Shockwave! Landing across three members of Russ is looking for a date, and that was the fight. Ooh, Hadu actually- it's Not quite over. Right there. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Final, Final hunt. hunt. Yeah, gonna be able to get those red buff slows. The Yoro Snap Trap not gonna be enough. The Command Protect being used on him, trying to negate some damage coming over from Hadu. Hadu can't really kite because. Oh! Hadu's gonna use that barrier, not gonna quite be. Oh, oh this is such a good fight. And he. Right oh! And Final Hunt was able to survive. The Command Protects coming out from Gambay in that fight were huge. Winning's gonna turn his focus right up to Joan. He's not gonna be able to get any kills there. He's just gonna back out of that one. He did manage to get a decent amount of damage. And that was the fight. Oh, that shock blaze, shock blast, rather, almost finishing off Gambe there. But that was the fight that Elite Crew needed. They were able to pick up three members, I believe, of um, Russ is looking for a date. And that's just going to go into feeding their team, getting them some gold so they can get more items and transition into this late game. And yeah, in terms of morale, after that Vi engage and the real huge crush, that was the exact answer that they needed to just say, hey, we're in this game, you can't mess with us, get off. And yeah. Mindgraph, in ahead. the middle of all that, he took mid tower, so it was a really great trade for Elite Gaming Crew. Yeah, how the fight went down was uh, Voodoo actually landed a really good solar flare onto um, Hadu there. But Actually, we are seeing Minecraft that unleash power going down on him at a point blank ace in the hole, picking up a kill for Hadu right there. But the solar for there was able to lock up Hadu long enough so that they were able to engage, and the command shockwave that came out from Gambe in that fight was huge. Brought together three members to be uh, locked up long enough for Minecraft, um, final final hunt, and Joan NBK to be able to get a lot of AoE damage down, and that really helped. They were able to kill Mikey really quickly, and that's what they really need in this game. Yeah, and I don't know if you could call Leona or Yana Wombo combo, but it was... Yeah, oh, Leona power. getting caught there. <laughs> Voodoo Savior getting a bit caught out there by... Ooh, Kralo looking to engage with that Vault Breaker. He is going to get in range for the uh, Assault Battery, but he's not going to opt to use it. 
And right now we are seeing Kralo go with the same build as last game. Spirit of the Elder Lizard as well as the Frozen Heart. He's moderately tanky, but he's also doing damage. Yeah, his Frozen Mallet's gonna slow whoever he hits, and he's gonna be sticks, be able to stick so well, even with the exhaust. It's all battery being used on a funnel hunt. He's getting dropped really low. He's gonna try to use a counter trick to slow three of them down. And Plushy Mike is able to pick up the kill. They have to be careful. They are very oom right now. Kray is winning coming in from the back. Oh. They're gonna try and fight onto Mind Grab here. The Command Shockwave just locking up Kray, and that's gonna help them get get away. And looks like. And Lee Crew's gonna look to re-engage. Solar's landing right onto Mikey here. The Zen is playing, landing across three members there. Voodoo's gonna drop. Winning going to re-engage in that fight. Minecraft's gonna be the next target here. Ace in the hole, finishing off that target. A triple kill. Coming and Caitlyn stayed so safe that entire fight. And uh, winning actually being saved by Caitlyn. As, as soon as Leona jumped in, she actually landed on a K-trap and just froze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not much you can do in the Yordle Snap Trap. Just stops you dead in your track. So... Cupcakes are really... OP. Exactly, cupcakes are OP. So in this game, we are seeing some back and forth action, which is, it's this game is very intense. I like this. Elite crew are picking their fights decently well, but the lead that Russ is looking for a date has is really playing into their favor right now. Yeah, 29 kills in 25 minutes. So we should wait about 45 seconds, and then there will be another kill. But Dragon's going to be coming up in about. 35 seconds and both teams will look to try to pressure the other into contesting it you know i want to take a quick look at the items coming out for both of these mid laners we are seeing uh plushy mikey on syndra grabbing that uh deathfire grasp first that gives him a lot of single target burst potential I th i'd go far enough to say with unleashed power and that deathfire grasp grass he's able to burst down any member on the team of elite crew so oh undoubtedly if he's not able to get into that back line he will be able to to just destroy one of the frontline tanks final hunt or um mine graph so i think that's a really good pickup for him so that he's able to use syndra to her full advantage we are seeing Krabble, a stolen battery being used on a Joan, Scout of the Week being used, but that uh, Command Shotgun is being able to lock up, Unleashed Power being used, going to be able to finish off Joan there, Mikey looks like he's going to be able to fall, Ignite, Ignite was ticking down, Crane is going to be the next one to go down, one for two there, great answer. That's going to be... Crew. That's going to be a Dragon, and Command Shockwave not quite landing on the Vi, taking down the kill on Corky. It looks like they'll be able to take this without any troubles. Yeah, um, there is a ward on it right now for... Uh, Russ is looking for a date. Hawk, uh, Hadou and Frosty might try to look for a steal, but it's gonna be very hard. Yeah, this, there is a smite on Final Hunt, he's gonna smite that away. Yeah, smite, smite being the best resource a jungler has for those objectives. Taking off a 910 chunk of that dragon. It's pretty hard for Caitlyn and a, uh, Sona to outbest that. Yeah, exactly. Minecraft, Minecraft just putting some pressure on mid, forcing them to head there. We'll see where he goes next. I'm... I'm really interested right now. We see Gambit for you. He did fall a bit behind uh, in the early game, but he's starting to crawl back into this game. He's three and five right now. He did opt to go for that Morello Namacon. I believe that's what it's called now. Um, and he's sitting on a blasting wand. So he does have a decent amount of cooldown reduction and mana regen. So he can dish out those uh, command shockwaves a bit more often as well as the dissonances and the um, command protects and the command attack. Being able to use her ball to really play a big part in team fights or pretty much for zoning when, it, when um, Russ is looking for a date is going to look to push. Yeah, for sure. And if we look at the kill distribution on both of the teams, almost all of the gold has been on Caitlyn and Syndra. And if either of those drops, it's a good chance that the damage just won't be enough to kill Elite Gaming Crew. Yeah, we are seeing Russ is looking for a date right here, just grouping up in that mid lane. They might look to go for a fight. Frosty does have an Oracles on himself, so they're gonna they're gonna wanna look to clear out wards around Baron and hopefully go for that, maybe force a fight or just pick that up for themselves. Baron buff would be huge in if they're looking to siege towers or press their advantage. Russ LFD just looking a little unsure of themselves between farming, backing, and pressuring mid. And it looks like Elite is mirroring that uncertainty because they're just not quite sure what they're up to. Both teams just happy to farm up the lanes and clear the jungle. Recall going down for Gambay for you. We are seeing a really strong, um, I guess you could say, ward coverage coming out from um, Russ is looking for a date. 
take a look here they pretty much have the entire river warded up so they're gonna know uh whenever elite gaming crew or elite crew rather um is going to transition themselves to try and get into the jungle of russ is looking for a date or if they're looking to try and push objectives onto baron or dragon so and yeah. even though that elite gaming crew is a little behind in gold experience wise minecraft and final hunt are the only two people on the map that have passed level 16. they have the level 3 alts minecraft's actually level 17 and they're going to probably prove to be the bigger threats in the fights minecraft getting a bit taking a bit of damage there from the dark spheres and the scatter of the weak so we talked a little bit about the Syndra pick and how crucial it could really be for Plushy Mikey and right now I think it's working out decently well. He was able to get that early game advantage with uh, the Unleashed Power dealing tons of burst damage early on and with that that's able to transition into late game to where Syndra is just someone you can't ignore in fights. That's true but I mean if you have an Olaf Ragnarok and running straight at you there's not much Syndra can do if the ult combo doesn't... Oh. <laughs> Doesn't right. connect, but the exhaust goes down. Exhaust going down onto Minecraft there. Prelol does have assault and battery available if he decides to use it. And five members right now. Russ is, Russ is looking for a date. He's gonna go onto that and a kill being secured there by Hadaku or Hadu kill secured. Rather. Yeah, kill secured. That and they look like they're gonna go for Baron with this pick. Yeah, and I want to say they're gonna be able to finish this Baron because Gambay for you is split pushing in that bottom lane. So. Yeah. It's possibly not the best choice to take the tower, but at that point, they had no idea how grouped that uh, Russ's LFD were. And if we just take, take a look there, one Dark Sphere, um, what's, what's that ability called? Force of Will was able to take down a quarter of uh, Joan NBK's health. Imagine how much damage that would do if he was able to get even just a Dark Sphere off or a sp Scatter the Weak into an, an Unleashed Power. So. Right now, Plushy Mikey is looking really strong, but we do talk quite a bit about Mikey and how he plays exceptionally well in that mid lane. We also don't want to take away credit from Hadu right now on Caitlyn. He is 7-1-2, 232 CS, and he has, position he has been positioning himself really well in these fights. And he's secured so many kills, obviously he has two assists, but he's been playing safe enough that the other team just hasn't been able to access him, and the two previous fights, they just, his health basically hasn't dropped. Um, he's been farming for free almost. Yeah, especially with three champions on uh, Elite Crew that are able to get into that back line. Final Hunt on Jax, Minecraft on Olaf, and Voodoo Savior MBK on uh, Leona. They're able to get into that back line relatively easily. We do have to take note though that uh, Hadu does have that 90 caliber net and Flash to, to get away from those types those types of engagements so i definitely think right now that the focus for uh, elite crew should be someone like plushy mikey on uh syndra because he does only have that flash available and that scatter the weak but um with olaf having ragnarok being able to ignore all forms of cc that it, it wouldn't really be a problem for him to go right down onto mikey and you know when he got caught that last time, he started pretty close to Baron, and he actually made it walking all the way back up to his turret and halfway back before they could even burst him down with five people. So imagine that that distribution of damage being spread open. He's basically going to have free roam in the next team fight. We see winning disconnected and hopefully a pause will go down so that he can reconnect. Unless, of course, Russ is again looking for a date. <laughs> they aren't going to call a pause on this one. Um, I'm sure they know that they can. Uh, I guess they'll just... They don't want to. I guess they don't want to stall out the game any longer. But um, winning is going to be disconnected for the time being, unfortunately. So, they, I mean, that's that's pretty huge too, because with so much coordination, that's like a that's like a four man report. You're basically guaranteed to be banned. <laughs> dragon dragon pressure coming down right now, and yeah, it looks like they'll get that for free. As elite just doesn't doesn't respond at all. Yeah, but another dragon being picked up for. Oh, it looked like winning did reconnect. Um, at this, at this point in the game, I really, I really like the position that uh, Russ is looking for a date is in. They have that Baron buff, and they should really be trying to push their advantage. They have really good siege with Hadu on Caitlyn, as well as Mikey on that Syndra, being able to use those dark spears uh, that can provide a lot of zone potential when they're trying to go for those turrets. 
And just like a Nidalee Spear or a Blitzhook, it's not exactly if he lands anything, it's just a simply a matter of when. Syndra's Dark Spear is doing so much, and if somebody gets caught by the slow from Force of Will, it's going to be game over with them. Yeah, exactly, and especially with that Baron buff being available, or being on them right now, the regeneration for their mana and health is going to be enough so that they can poke and... You know, take poke and they'll be fine. They won't really have to worry too much about elite crew. So, I definitely, I definitely like the chances of Russ is looking for a date right now. That's not, however, to say that elite crew isn't in this game at all. They are still in this game. This, this is by no means uh, in complete control of uh, Russ is looking for a date. Absolutely. I mean, if winning doesn't ever reconnect and then it's a four v five, who knows, right? Anything could happen. But yeah. we mentioned earlier that. Uh, these teams, at at their level, oh, Gambit going down so quickly. Yeah, we just at saw this... Mikey catching out Gambit right there. So you want to go back? Go want to go ahead and what you were saying? Uh, yeah. So at this level, it's very hard for teams to close out with their advantages, and Baron has run out with almost no towers going down. That's that's pretty significant. What's interesting to take note though, uh, winning is disconnected, yet Russ is looking for a date is still confident to push onto this tower. Olaf coming in from the back. Is he gonna go in? Ooh, not too much coming up from that. Kralo gonna use that Volt Breaker. The Baron buff has expired though. Minecraft is very tanky on that Olaf. He's sitting on almost 4,000 health. He has 160 armor on almost 100 magic resist. So, oh yeah, okay, winning did reconnect, so he's gonna be pushing up in that top. And he might be having some lagging issues because he is just standing there, but. Um, let's hope we can get that fixed soon so that that they uh, so that Russ is looking for a date are able to push this advantage. Because I mean, he's he's debonair Jace. He can stand there and do things whatever he wants. I yeah, mean, he's, he's helping he, just by being there. He's AFK farming. Like, how much more do you want, right? He's literally AFK farming. Hopefully, though, that this team. Hopefully, Elite Gaming Crew does not pick up on this. They look like they're starting to get a little testy. Yeah, I'm not sure if it notifies the enemy team when someone disconnects. Um, but if if Elite Crew eventually catches on that winning has been disconnecting this whole time, they could look to just push down the mid lane and a 4v5, even though Russ, Russ uh, is looking for a date, is ahead in this game, a 4v5 is not what they want. And interestingly, even though the Russ, Russ needs a date is so far ahead, all the lanes are pushed towards them, apart from mid. And that's a huge amount of farm, that's a huge amount of vision, and this gold lead is just not meaning as much. Meanwhile, their wards, however, cover at least two-thirds of the map. Uh, we see the entire mid being warded, they want to look for that siege, but they're just not finding the chance to be able to push it through. Yeah, unfortunately we are seeing winning having a lot of connection issues here. Uh, let's hope they can get that resolved, though. Um, if if Elite Crew are able to farm up, they will slowly get back into this game, but um, Russ is looking for a date is also farming up, so it's not like they're they're just farming up with, with no answer by Russ is looking for a date. So, Jax is going to continually get stronger and stronger, but so is Caitlyn um, and Plushy Mikey on Syndra, so... I think if we went to a full 10-man 30 item, or no, I'm sorry, 10-man 60 item game, Elite Elite probably has it, because between the Leona into an Orianna ult, into a Jax with Corky bursting from the back and Olaf not giving a... Oh, there's another catch. Olaf not giving a damn. There's not much that, uh, that Russ is looking for a date can do. They just don't have the peel for that. Yeah, we are seeing... Uh, Russ is looking for a date right now, pushing onto this Baron, looking to get their second Baron of the game, and winning, has reconnected, he seems to be stable with his connection right now. He's in the hole being used onto Game A there, taking him really low, he's not going to be able to contest this. And Volbreaker being used over the wall, Sultan Battery going to be able to finish off Game A right there, and Joan going to use that um, W to get away from that, and the Ragnarok being used by Mindgap right there, Exhaust was used on him, Joan, oh, and a little bit of a predicament there. Nothing John is going to be caught here unless... Oh! Nope, they're not going to go for it. 
Yeah, if we take a look right now, uh, Hadu is sitting on 300 CS and 7 kills. He is almost full build. He is one item away from being full build, and he's doing a lot of damage right now. Just looking at the gold graph, he has 14,500 gold, and the next closest person is actually on his team, who's Syndra with 13,800. So, Ross pushing that gold lead as far as they can, with their two carries working really well. Yeah, Hadu did opt to go for that Banshee's Veil to negate uh, one enemy spell, so it could be to hopefully um, protect himself from a Solar Flare or a Zenith Blade, so that he can't, so he doesn't get engaged on, and it could really hurt his team if he's taken out early on in the fight. And the most important thing that Elite can contribute right now is that wave clear uh, between Olaf and Orianna. They'll be pretty safe at towers if they can keep the minions down. Final Hunt going aggressive here, the command shot with it across five members! Oh, Russell's looking for a day, Final Hunt gonna keep going on to Hadu there, he's gonna get knocked away by Jace though. He's gonna look to re-engage here, Hadu's gonna be able to kite around, and wow. Will Olaf be able to pentakill? Find out now. No, <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing that, but unfortunately, that fight was, you know, that was executed well. Oh, he's going for those axes, yep. He might do it. Oh. Oh. oh no. Pick up not quite. Crate, not quite. And right now it's not looking good for Elite. They had the right idea getting Final Hunt to go in there. The Command Shockwave landed across, I believe, four or five members of Russ is looking for a date. And that that had to be the fight where they, they needed the to GG, The GG call comes out, and that will be all she wrote. Good yeah. game. Russ is looking for a date, picking up another win. They are a new team to this tournament, but they are showing they are a force to be reckoned with. Great play by Russ is looking for a date, led by Plushy Mikey. Great playing there by Elite Crew. They will be dropping down to the lower bracket, and they will be playing tomorrow. So this was the last game of the of day one of the League of Legends Amateur Open Week 8. Uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. From myself, uh, Kodalok, and a Fozzy D Bear and everyone involved with helping out with the Amateur Open. I want to thank everyone so much for watching. Tune in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we will continue on with the tournament. We will be getting with the L&M brackets. So we hope to see everyone there. And thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great night, guys.